There's a wave of Bitcoin ETF applications in the last couple of weeks that brought a lot of excitement into the sector itself. BlackRock is probably the most notable of these. These are the coveted spot Bitcoin ETFs. We have the Bitcoin futures ETFs in the US, but these are different instruments. And now a bank report from Bernstein says the US has room for compliant crypto ETF products to grow in market share. They take a look at Grayscale, which full disclosure is affiliated by way of a shared parent company with Coindesk, Digital Currency Group. And Grayscale has really been the dominant product, but it's not the best product. It's not the most efficient product. And the fees are pretty onerous on a lot of users. So a Bitcoin ETF would really change the dynamic there. And this report digs into that quite a bit. I'm going to toss this straight to Jen. Let's talk about the Bitcoin ETF thing. There's been a ton of momentum around that, sort of this surprise institutional interest lingering in the US despite this crazy crackdown that we've seen from the SEC. What do you think about what Bernstein is saying here? Well, I think Bernstein is saying what I would expect Bernstein to say. I wonder if BlackRock has some information, some inside information that would have pushed them to file at this time. It seems weird that they would file, especially with their custodian being Coinbase. Coinbase has just been sued by the SEC. And so I hope that there is some information because the it, the industry is kind of rallying around this ETF. That said, it feels like a blast from the past that we're talking about ETFs again. And I just want to note that Canada has had a Bitcoin spot ETF for quite some time now. And so I think that when it actually does happen, it's going to be, you know, another step on the road to, to boring, a whole lot of nothing. There is definitely a market here for it. But I, I think that everyone's just hopeful for this ETF because it's a regulatory signal that some progress is being made in the US, right? I think the industry is, has gotten so used used to in the US of like taking one step forward and then one or two steps backwards and like making an application and then something working out and then this lawsuit coming out of nowhere. And so I think an ETF is going to be good. I think Bernstein is saying this, um, but it's more of a regulatory signal for me than anything else. And I think another good point to mention, it was brought up by our markets guest on First Mover this morning, is this ETF, if it gets approved, it's not going to happen tomorrow. There is some time for this to happen. And I think our guest said that it would be around 200 days at her estimate. So it's not something that is likely to happen, um, you know, within weeks or months, but I love to see the industry rallying around it. Well, what do you think? Oh, we could have an ETF launch right into a happening should bring us right into a bull run that would be, that'd be pretty glorious and uh, also just a recession speculation. yeah there has so. been a lot of recession talk i don't know <laughs> who knows who knows what's going on yeah to me the thing that speaks about this is like the investor size stuff right there's a fee on top of the gptc so if you purchase this asset well there's a management fee and it's like a two percent or something like that it adds up to about 380 million dollars per year for grayscale which is a lot of capital that's basically how they've been able to build their whole business empire right they they got to the spot first they built this trust. Everyone purchases it because they think that Bitcoin's going to go up and they want some exposure to it in a traditional product. They don't just want to hold Bitcoin. They want a, a TradFi product that has Bitcoin inside of it. And then Grayscale can just milk the fee. And the fee is substantially higher than any sort of ETF product out there. And that's sort of the moat that Grayscale has had for a while. That's not saying that Grayscale doesn't want this to turn into an ETF. That's been a longstanding ambition for them. And they filed to have this turn into an ETF time and time again. But for now, they sort of are enjoying being the only person on the block that's selling the drug, right? And so like, if they can keep doing that, will they keep earning fees, they keep all their products alive and keep growing the business. I think if something else comes in here, they're going to see not only Grayscale try to convert this to an ETF, but you're also going to see that fee percentage drop quite a bit. That being said, it might be offset by the volume, right? So if more people think that Bitcoin is validated because there's an ETF of it, you might see this Grayscale product grow in the future. Now it's like the same, not really a trust at that point, but you'll see the volumes grow. And so maybe it offsets it. But I think the fee is the thing to watch here. Zach? Yeah, big picture wise, this is all about getting into the retirement accounts of Americans everywhere, right? Easy peasy brokerage access to a Bitcoin vehicle that's a bit more easy to understand than the Bitcoin futures ETF product, which is a bit more complicated. There's all these like ETF watchers from Bloomberg and elsewhere who kind of like really dig into the weeds of this. And I heard some comments from one of them going back to what Jen said about the timing of this whole thing, which is really interesting, right? Like 
all of a sudden BlackRock filed. I think there was like three others that filed in pretty short order, right? So I think there's a lot of speculation that maybe the Bitcoin ETF on the spot side is where Gary Gensler gives a little bit, right? He says, hey, we're cracking down on some of these other aspects of the crypto ecosystem, but with these really known, well-known players who know how to work sort of the regulatory apparatus in the United States, maybe he'll give a little bit when it comes to the spot Bitcoin ETF that the industry has been clamoring for all along. Now, if the BlackRock one gets approved, I think there's interesting legal ramifications for the ongoing fight between Grayscale and the SEC. Remember, the Grayscale, I think, sued the SEC over the denial for them to turn the trust product into an ETF product. So I think my understanding is that once one gets approved, subsequent ones will, will then also be approved. And potentially we're seeing um, this, you know, this this fleet of products enter the market, which I think would be good for consumers in the long run, run lo in the long run, because it will reduce again the fee that GBDC has commanded, which is like significantly higher than other ETFs in other asset classes. So hopefully there's some movement there. I think the timing thing that you brought up, Jen, is really the interesting thing. And there's been a lot of speculating and a lot of trying to like read through the tea leaves as to, in terms of like where Gensler is going to give and where he's going to stand strong as it relates to the whole crackdown thing. So if you have any intel on that, Jen, I mean, do share. What are, what are the experts saying about this, this weird timing, this onslaught of sudden applications? She's just going to well, show Canada again. That's all she's going to do. I'm just going to show Don't Canada do again. Don't do no it. one has co outright come and said that, yes, definitely BlackRock knows something. But I think, Zach, everyone has said the same thing that, that you have. It is, it is, it seems very coincidental that the largest asset management firm in the world would file at such a time, especially with Coinbase. And so everyone is watching with a close eye, but no one has, has let the secret out. If, if anyone has secrets out there who I've spoken to. Um, but I think that this is probably one of the more interesting ETF filings that we should watch. And I will say, I did see a conspiracy theory on Twitter, and it is completely a conspiracy theory that said maybe BlackRock is going to help Coinbase get the registration that they need with the SEC. And there's going to be this like trifecta of ETF and regulation and everyone working together because BlackRock has that kind of pull. That is just something I saw on Twitter and I have no information to back up if that is actually happening, but a good conspiracy theory. Well, thank you for that. BlackRock and Coinbase <laughs> indeed have been working together on this. I don't think Coinbase is mentioned by name in their uh, filing, in the BlackRock filing, but BlackRock and Coinbase have had a partnership for a good, good year or two now.